Australian forests. Complex, mysterious, deadly. The tangled branches and gloomy undergrowth provide perfect hideouts. Shadows in which to lie in wait. Secret lairs from which to launch a lethal ambush. A predator's paradise. These are the case files of Australia's notorious forest killers. Lurking beneath the canopy are predators that conceal weapons, hunt in gangs and lay deadly traps. Even the plant life should be considered armed and dangerous. Topping the list is a killer that is renowned for throttling its victims. The Amethystine Python. Meet Australia's biggest snake. It can grow to more than 20 feet long. The Amethystine Python, locally known as the Daintree Strangler. As much at home on the ground as he is in the trees, this magnificent male has a ravenous appetite. He could devour an adult wallaby. He hunts in the pitch dark of the forest night. But he doesn't need night vision. Heat sensitive pits in his jaws can detect warm blooded prey. There's nowhere to hide. As he prowls, his tongue flicks in and out, tasting the air, relaying chemical messages to his brain via a special receptor in the roof of his mouth, known as the Jacobson's organ. He smells a rat. A plump, juicy rat. While remaining perfectly still might save the rat from a predator that's reliant on eyesight, there's no escaping the acute senses of this killer. This snake's bite contains no venom. He doesn't need it. His powerful jaws and long backward angled teeth grip the rat while he slides his deadly coils around the prey. Powerful muscles constrict, crushing, suffocating, squeezing the life out of his victim. To swallow something this big needs an unusual approach. His jaws are held in place with elastic tendons, which can stretch wide enough to accommodate amazingly large prey. The rat is swallowed whole, head first, fur and all. A tasty morsel and enough to keep this Daintree Strangler satisfied for several weeks. While the Amethystine Python uses brute force to throttle its victims, 
other forest assassins use more intoxicating methods to subdue prey. Australian forests harbour creepy crawlies that wield potent chemical weapons and should be approached with caution. These beautiful golden threads, catching the sun, glistening in the light, have been built by a spider. The golden orb weaver spider, named after its remarkable gilded web. Attractive in appearance and sinister by design. Bees and other insects are attracted to the bright threads. A deadly trap constructed by the spider to lure and ensnare her prey. Measuring three feet across, her web is huge. A complex structure created by a master weaver. This is precision engineering, an intricate web of deceit. With a leg span of up to four inches, the inward pointing limbs of the golden orb weaver are specialized for weaving. Strong, flexible and light, the silk she spins is considered a wonder of the natural world. The web is so strong, it can stop large flying insects and even small birds. Now all she has to do is wait. In the dangerous underworld of the forest floor below, a community lives out its own drama. This is a katydid, a relative of grasshoppers. It lives among the leaf litter, feeding on the fallen leaves and seeds that cover the ground. Wherever it feeds, the shadows hide danger. Like this giant centipede. The katydid looks remarkably like a leaf, a clever deception that allows it to blend in with its surroundings. But it can't fool the deadly predator that has it locked in its sights. A nocturnal hunter, the giant centipede measures nearly 10 inches long. Its eyes can only just make out light and shade, but it doesn't rely on vision. With sensitive antennae, it tracks the chemical signals left by potential prey. Centipedes haven't changed much over the millennia. They would have stalked the forest floor around the feet of dinosaurs. They're equipped with fearsome weapons. Strong mandibles for tearing at flesh, claws to hold their victims still, and lethal venom. But the katydid also has sensitive antennae and knows the centipede is closing in. One jump and it escapes. But 
It's a leap to its death. The golden orb weaver's patience is rewarded. The Katie did struggles all it can, but it can't get free of the web. Or the spider's deadly fangs. Orb weaver venom is similar to that of the black widow spider of North America. It quickly paralyzes the katydid. Her meal is packaged and ready for consumption. Below, the centipede is still on the hunt. It's detected another katydid. This one doesn't sense the approaching threat. Moving at nearly two feet a second, the centipede's numerous legs give it the advantage of speed, and it quickly descends upon its mark. Now its legs are used to envelop the victim, holding it tightly as modified front legs, known as poison claws, inject lethal venom. Once subdued, the prey is ripped apart with serrated mandibles. Leaving little behind, disappears back into the gloom of the forest floor to digest its meal. While some of Australia's creepier inhabitants wage chemical warfare, other killers of the night use more primitive techniques. They simply tear flesh from bone. When hunting, carnivorous marsupials inflict grievous bodily harm. In the dense forests on the remote island of Tasmania, an attractive marsupial comes out just after dark. He's about three feet long and weighs over seven pounds. But don't be fooled by his innocuous looks. His dainty face hides powerful jaws armed with long, sharp teeth. He's a notorious hunter. a baby-faced killer. He hunts alone, prowling the forest floor for small or medium-sized mammals. Like Paddy Mallon, the smaller relative of the kangaroo. Tiger Quoll gorges on the soft tissue only. His jaws aren't strong enough to crunch through bone or tendon. He has to eat quickly. There are thieves in the shadows, ruffians ready to steal his prize. A Tasmanian devil, the larger cousin of the Quoll and a formidable rival. This one can smell the kill. To avoid a fight that he cannot hope to win, the quoll beats a hasty retreat. Luckily, he can do something that his ferocious cousin can't. Climb trees. Quite at home amongst the canopy, it doesn't take long for this adept hunter 
to find another meal. A nest of crested pigeons. Raiding the sleepy family, he snatches one of the babies in the ultimate nightmare. His sharp teeth shear through flesh and small bones, a grisly end for the young bird. While the quoll's appetite is satisfied, on the ground below, the night's carnage has only just begun. Tasmanian devils are the largest and fiercest of the marsupial carnivores alive today. This species used to roam all over the continent, but is now only found in Tasmania. They hunt at night, feeding on small mammals, birds and reptiles. But they'll occasionally take on prey much bigger than themselves. A solitary ambush predator, this male works alone. He spotted a mob of wallabies. With one of the most powerful mammalian bites on Earth, he can gnaw through every part of the carcass. Fur, flesh, tendons, even bone. A devil can devour 40% of its body weight in half an hour, leaving nothing to waste. But the scent of blood is thick in the air. A scent that other devils can smell from several miles away. The fresh kill attracts a motley crew. Tasmanian devils are one of the few solitary hunters known to feed communally. But this social gathering is not for the faint-hearted. It's everyone for themselves. Although this chaotic feeding frenzy appears to be lacking in table manners, there are rules. Long facial whiskers determine personal space. And when invisible lines are crossed, violent skirmishes break out. Older devils proudly wear the battle scars of conflicts won and lost. Devil dinner time is a decidedly brutish affair. While Tasmanian devils rely on powerful jaws to kill and dismember, other predatory strategies are more intricate. Weaving a tangled web the red-backed spider prefers to entrap a victim before draining the life from within. Fine silk lines, almost invisible in the forest gloom. They've been carefully placed so that the slightest touch sets off vibrations. And the assassin is waiting. A female redback spider. Tiny, her body is less than half an inch across. But deadly. Her red stripe 
is a warning badge. A single misstep sounds the alarm. The redback approaches her prey. Squirting a liquid silk to further entangle her victim. Struggling won't help. The strands just draw tighter and tighter. Now she bites. While a lethal cocktail of toxins incapacitates her prey, digestive enzymes have already started to break down her meal from within, turning it to liquid for the spider to suck up at its leisure. Potentially fatal to humans, the redback is considered one of the most dangerous spiders on Earth. Her offspring are no less ruthless. The female has laid her eggs in a sack. Once they hatch, the spiderlings are allowed to share their mother's web for a few days. But there are too many of them. There's only one way to fix that. These newborns are cannibals. They start to eat each other, as well as any unhatched eggs. Only the strongest will survive. In a few days, they'll disperse to build their own deadly traps. The red-backed spider clearly advertises its deadly nature with a bold red stripe. Sporting the same warning colours is another silent assassin. The red-bellied black snake wields chemical weapons of its own. The rivers and streams that nurture Australia's lush forests also harbour some rather nefarious characters. Slithering along a rocky creek bed is one of Australia's most notorious venomous snakes. This male red-bellied black snake is on the prowl. Equally at home in the water as he is on land, he rarely strays far from the watercourse to which he is so well adapted. With a predilection for aquatic species, he can track prey along the riverbank. and will even swim below the water's surface in pursuit of tadpoles and fish. And today, this silent assassin will need to ply all the tricks of his deadly trade. His keen eyesight and hearing have detected a moving target. a spotted marsh frog. This nimble amphibian is no easy meal. The fast-moving frog darts from one hiding hole to the next.
but it leaves behind a chemical trail, which is quickly detected by the red belly's probing tongue. The snake stealthily pursues his mark in a deadly game of cat and mouse. until there's nowhere left to hide. A deadly concoction of toxins and anticoagulants delivered by long, sharp fangs swiftly overwhelms the prey, which he devours whole paralysed, but still alive. Savouring his meal, this covert killer slinks back off into the shadows. Australian forests are full of peril. And it's not just the animals that are built to sting, maim and kill. Here, even the plant life is getting in on the action. While the noxious Gimpy Gimpy plant wields chemical weapons, carnivorous plants like the sinister sundew lure unsuspecting victims to their deaths. Home to a wealth of predators, these ancient forests can be dark and treacherous. But sometimes it's the forest itself that poses the greatest threat. Australian plants must be treated with a healthy respect. The Gimpy Gimpy stinging tree looks like an ordinary plant, but its leaves hold a deadly secret. It's one of the world's most toxic plants. Fine hairs on the leaves and stem contain potent venom. Passers-by can be envenomed by simply brushing against its foliage. Once lodged in the skin, these fine hairs release neurotoxins that cause excruciating and long-lasting pain. So brutal is the effect that it has been known to cause fatalities amongst dogs and even horses. These soft woody shrubs can grow up to 15 feet tall. Resident pariahs that are best avoided. But strangely, some creatures can withstand the toxic hairs and use the tree as shelter from predators. Mantis nestle amongst its leaves. Spiders string their webs from its stems. They don't seem at all bothered by the tree's venom. This caterpillar can even eat the leaves, oblivious to the horrific fate of other creatures that even touch the tree. It's the caterpillar of the Jezebel butterfly. It's managed to breach this tree's impenetrable defense against the plant eaters of the forest by evolving immunity to the toxins. For every deadly weapon evolved, there's always someone who can find a defense against it. One plant has developed a more proactive strategy. Rather than keeping animals away, it draws them close. This is the sundew. The clear droplets on the end of its tentacles catch the light, giving the plant a glittering beauty and its name. 
Yet these exquisite diamonds hold a sinister secret. They're designed to entrap the plant's food. Most plants get all the nutrients they need from the soil. But in areas of poor soil, they can't get enough crucial nitrogen. So they must look elsewhere. These clear droplets look and smell alluringly like sweet nectar, irresistible to insects. As the ant tries to feed on the rich nectar, it doesn't realise that this is a scam. There is no nectar, just a very, very sticky mucus from which there is no escape. Struggling only makes it worse. Exhaustion will bring about a drawn out death. To extract the valuable nutrients from its victim, the sundew excretes digestive enzymes. Slowly dissolving the ant so that the precious nitrogen can be absorbed through the leaves. Some of these plants can grow to over three feet high and live for 50 years or more, getting everything they need from the corpses of unfortunate prey. Australia's deadly plants come in all guises. The Gimpy Gimpy has fine hairs laced in venom. The sundew lures and ensnares, and adding fuel to the fire, Australia's most famous tree coats itself in poison. As diverse as Australia's forests are, they are dominated by one particular family of trees, the eucalypts. Also known as gum trees, these ubiquitous icons are killers in their own right. Eucalyptus leaves are covered in glands that produce oil, giving them a waxy texture. These oils are toxic, even to humans, and most of Australia's native animals leave them well alone. Except koalas. They're not just immune to the toxic leaves, they thrive on them. Although the eucalyptus leaves are low in protein and high in toxins, the koala's specially adapted stomach extracts all the nutrition it needs, which isn't much. To conserve what precious energy they do get, they just sleep sometimes for 22 hours a day. For koalas, the eucalypt is the giver of life. But these trees can also bring death. It's not the toxicity of the eucalyptus oil that is most dangerous. It's the oil itself. It burns. Bushfires frequently ravage Australian forests. Gum trees are known as gasoline trees. Their highly flammable oils fuel the inferno, burning at temperatures higher than 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, hotter than the burning point of jet fuel. Firestorms incinerate the native animals that can't escape. What was once a refuge has become 
a crematorium. But while the flames consume the forest, the gum trees have evolved to depend on the blaze. The passing flames open their seed capsules. In the burnt, rich, ash-laden soil, the seeds establish themselves and grow quickly, affording them a strong competitive advantage over other plants. The forest that burns belongs to the eucalypts. A force of nature. Bushfires devour everything in their path. But in Australia's tropical north, there are other destructive forces at play. Tiny toxic terrors wreak havoc amongst the branches. For green tree ants, the forest canopy is a gangster's paradise. Green tree ants live in a rigid, structured society with one queen and up to half a million workers. Everyone works for the good of the colony. Even the larvae do their part, generating silk for the building work. They're also known as weaver ants. The colony constructs a multitude of nests throughout the canopy. These multi-chambered structures are built by the smaller, minor workers who weave them from leaves and larval silk. In an incredible display of teamwork, communicating by touch and pheromones, these workers even build body bridges and ladders to bridge gaps. All these workers need to be fed, so larger, major workers go out to hunt. Marauding gangs scour the forest canopy, and in such numbers, they can take on prey much larger than themselves. Cicadas, beetles, and other victims are quickly laid to waste. This deadly, organized gang pillages the surrounding area. Very little stands in their way. These major workers are also the soldiers, fierce sentinels, defenders of the colony. The presence of another ant species on their patch is not tolerated. Armed to the teeth, trapjaw ants are big, carnivorous ants with extraordinarily strong jaws. These formidable predators wield a bite force of over 300 times their own body weight. But this small troop of foraging trap jaws is no match for the green ant army. Encroaching on rival turf, they're outnumbered and outgunned. The green tree ants unleash an arsenal of chemical weapons. They pepper the trap jaws with formic acid fired from abdominal glands. The invaders are quickly overwhelmed. While green tree ants ravage the forest canopy, the forest floor below is no less of a battleground. Amidst the host of thieves and assassins, roams 
an ancient warrior, the Rainforest Scorpion. Over 400 million years ago, this primeval creature emerged from the oceans. A predator that still prowls the forests today. Australia's rainforest scorpion is a war machine. Protected by a tough exoskeleton armor, armed with huge, powerful pincers, and carrying a venomous sting on his tail. He can defend himself and he can hunt. His flattened shape allows him to squeeze into rock crevices or hide under logs from where he watches over his territory. When another male invades his turf, he's having none of it. He leaves his rival in no doubt that he's not welcome. He comes out at night to hunt under the light of the moon. An arachnid related to spiders, he has numerous pairs of eyes. And even in low light, he can detect light and dark shapes but he can also feel his way through the undergrowth. Fine sensory hairs detect the faintest movement in the air. And special organs called pectines on the underside of his body decipher textures and scents on the ground. He hunts spiders, centipedes, and crickets. He uses his formidable pincers to overcome smaller prey with brute strength. His venom is valuable and is reserved for larger prey or self-defense. The serrated inner edges of his pincers tear the victim into bite-sized chunks. While alien-like mouthparts secrete digestive enzymes to break down his meal. He secured his catch without the need to spill any precious venom. His chemical weapons cache remains full. He's locked and loaded. If he's attacked, he won't go quietly. While some forest assassins diligently conserve precious venom, others wield it with reckless abandon. Lethal toxins literally drip from the fangs of Australia's largest spider, instilling fear in the hearts of all who live here. The Australian Tarantula. Deep within Australia's steamy highland rainforests, hidden terrors lie in wait. A few days of torrential downpour have disturbed the forest floor. And from dark places, dark things emerge. The tarantula or bird-eating spider is Australia's largest spider. It can grow to the size of a man's hand. Measuring nearly half an inch long, its fangs are longer than those of a brown snake, delivering venom that's lethal to frogs, toads and small mammals. Foraging amongst the leaf litter, a brown bandicoot wanders perilously close to the spider's lair. And 
has caught its attention. But the bandicoot has little to fear. It's immune to the spider's deadly bite. A predator itself, the bandicoot now eyes the spider with hungry eyes. In response, the tarantula issues a warning. Its impressive threat display is enough to ward off the predator. With the threat gone, the spider retreats into its lair. Tarantula burrows can extend three feet below the surface. Radiating out from the entrance is an intricate network of strong and durable strands. Trip lines that alert the spider to the presence of passing prey. The tarantula waits patiently for impromptu dinner guests to announce their arrival. Unaware that they are on the menu. A single misstep seals the bush cricket's fate. The hulking spider drags its victim back into its lair so that the feast may begin. Life in the undergrowth is perilous. To survive here, forest inhabitants have developed a raft of unscrupulous predatory strategies. While invertebrates wage chemical warfare and carnivorous marsupials tear flesh from bone, even the trees sting and burn. So, the next time you enter an Australian forest, remember, you should tread carefully. Because lurking within every shadow and behind every tree are a host of deadly Australians. The Australian desert, a dry and desolate wasteland, hell on earth. In these parts, only the toughest survive. Heat and dehydration kill indiscriminately. And the wildlife is armed and dangerous. Out here, it's everyone for themselves. These are the case files of Australia's notorious desert killers. In this lineup of unusual suspects, the agenda is kill or be killed. While some offenders plead self-defence, others are guilty as charged. Notorious fiends that cheat, swindle and kill for a living. The Australian desert is a realm of cold-blooded killers. There are more reptiles in the Australian desert than anywhere else on Earth. Lizards and snakes have been vying for supremacy here for eons. A biological arms race that has given rise to a weapon of terrifying efficiency. Venom. This barren landscape is home to some of the world's deadliest snakes. But there can only be one king. The Mulga snake, otherwise known as the King Brown. Measuring nearly 10 feet long, this large male is on the hunt. Out here, prey is scarce, so he does what he must to survive. 
Lording over his close relatives, Australia's largest venomous snake has developed a taste for reptilian flesh. He uses inside knowledge of his victims to gain an edge, such as knowing that reptiles need to bask in the sun to warm up. The mulga's flickering tongue has picked up a scent trail. He's locked onto a target and is relentless in his pursuit. Maintaining his focus, he's not distracted by the presence of nearby lizards. He's tracking a much more substantial meal. This is a western brown snake, one of the world's top 10 venomous snakes, and usually treated with healthy respect by most predators. But in addition to his own chemical weapons, the mulga also possesses chemical defences. Within his biological arsenal, he carries a genetic resistance to snake venom. A bite from even the deadliest of snakes has little effect. So the western brown poses no threat. Sensing the peril, it attempts to flee. In desperation, it tries to conceal itself within a nearby hole, but the mulga uses his size and strength to block the only exit to what now becomes a tomb. To ensure a quick and efficient kill, the venom output of the mulga is higher than any other snake on earth. As he devours his five foot long meal, each chewing action delivers yet another dose of deadly toxins. A killer of killers. The mulga snake is a snake's worst nightmare. The mulga may lord over even the deadliest of snakes within this barren realm. But the King Brown is not the only monarch in these parts. An ancient reptilian rival stalks the desert plains, drooling over its victims before moving in for the kill. Meet Australia's largest and toughest lizard. Weighing in at around 33 pounds and measuring over nine feet long, the Parenti is the Lizard King. A formidable apex predator that few animals dare to tangle with. This large male is a notorious desert stalker. And he's hungry. He's using his highly tuned senses to forage in the grass. His eyes are shaded from the sun and sensitive to the slightest of movements. Licking the air with his tongue, he tastes the faint chemical trace of prey. Nothing much escapes his attention.
most of the time, he makes do with small rodents. Out here, in Australia's barren interior, potential meals are few and far between. So he's not above scavenging. But such a big, active hunter sometimes needs a more substantial meal. A parenti of his size will actively hunt wombats and even lone dingoes. Most reptiles wouldn't even dream of taking on a red kangaroo. But the parenti isn't most reptiles. He can do something other lizards can't. Parentes can run and breathe at the same time. He has a large breathing tube and strong neck muscles that act like bellows to keep him well oxygenated, even at high speed. The Parenti is one of the fastest of all reptiles. He can maintain speeds of around 25 miles an hour for more than half a mile, making him a very efficient endurance hunter. Even so, a kangaroo is no easy target. His best chance is to launch a surprise attack. He focuses on the weakest and most vulnerable within the mob. This predator's festering mouth oozes more than drool. It's recently been discovered that the bite of the parenti is venomous. Anticoagulants contained within the venom induce a collapse in blood pressure and dizziness soon subdues the victim. Selecting an unwary target, his approach is silent. But the desert community is always alert to stalkers. The chase is on. A contest of speed and agility. On the open plain, the kangaroo would be much faster. But while navigating the low desert scrub, it struggles to reach top speed. But ultimately, the parenti is outclassed. There's little shame in being outrun by this iconic Australian sprinter. But the parenti turns his attention to a very different challenge. He's crossed paths with the recently fed mulga snake. As one of the most venomous snakes on the planet, the mulga is a real threat to most reptiles. But the parenti stands his ground. The snake poses little threat to him. He's too big. And thanks to eons of coevolution, parentes have also developed a resistance to snake venom. So it's the mulga snake that finds itself in peril. And the parenti doesn't hesitate.
It's a sizable meal that will provide this unscrupulous predator with enough energy to stalk his next victim. While some stalk, others cheat. Why waste valuable energy in chasing prey when gullible victims can be lured to their deaths? The desert is full of swindlers, but none is more crafty than the sly and ruthless Death Adder. His name says it all. Like the Mulga, the Death Adder is among the world's deadliest snakes. But rather than pursue his meals at top speed across the desert as the Parenti does, he sits and hides and waits for his meals to come to him. The soft desert colours of the Death Adder's two foot long body blend in perfectly with his arid surroundings. Lying motionless, his disconcerting eyes scan the horizon for potential victims. This wandering skink has no idea he's there. When it comes to launching his lethal attack, surprise is everything. For a successful kill, he needs to entice the skink to within optimum striking distance. Ever the swindler, this crafty desert con artist unveils a secret weapon. Slightly flattened and darker in colour, the tip of his tail seems to have a life of its own. When the snake twitches it, it looks just like a tasty wriggling grub. This cunning optical illusion creates an irresistible honey trap for a hungry skink. But the curious skink remains just out of range. So cold and calculating, the Death Adder slowly moves the lure closer to his head. His trap is now set. Mesmerised, the skink succumbs to temptation. It's the fastest strike of all Australian snakes. A lethal dose of fast-acting neurotoxins delivers a swift end, leaving this clinical desert con artist to quietly devour his home-delivered meal. The Death Adder is not the only master of disguise in the Australian desert. It's been said that the greatest trick that the devil ever performed was to convince others that he doesn't exist. The thorny devil is a prickly customer with a knack for blending in.
prowling the arid wasteland is a terror of the outback. A serial killer that lays waste to countless prey at every meal. This beast is the stuff of nightmares. At least that's how the ants of the outback perceive the thorny devil. Otherwise known as Moloch Horridus. Meet a true desert monster. He looms over the ants upon which he gorges. Yet he's only a modest four inches from head to tail. Rather than use up energy in the desert heat chasing after prey, he strategically positions himself along ant trails, letting his meal come to him. He devours thousands of ants in a single sitting, and as ants are present all year round, he doesn't go hungry. But he's not the only predator here. The desert is full of hunters much larger than him. To avoid predation, he must avoid detection. He blends in with his surroundings a devilish trickster and master of disguise. With all the swagger of a punk rocker, he sways as he walks, mimicking the movement of wind-swept leaves, which helps to conceal his presence from aerial assailants. But sometimes the deceit of the devil lets him down. He has to defend himself. For this, he wears impressive spiky armor. He also has a fatty growth on the back of his neck that looks like his head, just enough to fool a predator and shield his real head. A cunning deception designed to buy him time. Eventually, even the most dogged of predators would surely realise that this meal presents more pain than gain. Deceit and deception. Smoke and mirrors. Sometimes it's the things we can't see that frighten us the most. Under the dim light of a full moon, giant huntsman spiders prowl in the dark. And hungry ghost bats watch on from the shadows. There's very little shelter in the desert so a cave is a precious sanctuary. It's a tempting refuge for some of the desert's creatures, but a hunting ground for others. A den of iniquity. One of the more terrifying residents, the cave huntsman spider. This spider is huge. It has a leg span of six inches. It doesn't build a web. It chases down prey. Insects, lizards, frogs, and even sometimes small mammals. It's one of the fastest spiders in the world. Without a web to detect prey, 
the hairs on its legs pick up vibrations in the air and sharp vision helps to pinpoint a victim. A Dunart. These rodent-sized nocturnal marsupials have yet to leave their daytime retreat. The spider singles out a target. But the setting sun has stirred other terrors within the cave. Ghost bats awaken with murderous appetites. And they've also noticed the tasty morsels scampering across the cave floor. Also known as the false vampire bat, the ghost bat is named for its pale colour and thin wing membranes. A ghost in the night. It's the largest echolocating bat in Australia, with sharp teeth to rip and tear the flesh off its victims, which include birds, rodents and other bats. Its big ears provide long-range hearing to find prey. Roosting in the roof of the cave, it quickly devours the dunart leaving little but fur and bones. In the desert, nothing goes to waste. Cheated out of a potential meal, the spider won't go hungry for long. It's identified another victim. Quickly subdued by the spider's venom, the unfortunate cricket is eaten alive. In these parts, hiding in the shadows is no safe bet. One way to deter unwanted attention is to just be disgusting. One repugnant reptile keeps predators at bay by smelling worse than death. The spiny-tailed gecko. Once it gets dark, a hunter of the night is ready to emerge from the branches. She spent all day basking in the safety of the treetops. She only comes down to the ground to hunt. Spiny-tailed geckos can see perfectly well in the dark. Nocturnal geckos are unusual. They're one of the few creatures that can see colour at night. She can do this because she has special cells in her eyes. Cones that respond to different wavelengths of light and are more than 350 times more sensitive than human colour vision. This sensitive colour vision is just right for hunting in the dark. But there are others who can also see at night. This 25 inch long creature might look like a snake, but it's actually a Burton's legless lizard. It's a predator. Its eyesight is good, but when hunting, it only reacts to movement. As long as the gecko keeps perfectly still, she won't be noticed. The gecko returns to the hunt. This giant centipede would be an ideal meal. But there's a problem. She's been seen by another predator. 
This time, it is a snake, a highly venomous one, the ringed brown snake. This snake doesn't rely as much on vision as scent, tasted by its flickering tongue. Keeping stock still won't save the gecko now, but her night vision is so sensitive that she can tell the difference between the snake and the legless lizard, even in the dark. So she employs another defence. She secretes a foul-smelling liquid from glands in her tail. The pungent odour completely overwhelms the snake's sense of smell. A powerful deterrent. Once the threat is gone, she settles for a quick beetle snack before retreating to the safety of her tree. While the spiny-tailed gecko finds refuge in the treetops, for others, the canopy harbours unseen dangers. With nocturnal predators lurking, crimes of passion play out amongst the branches. Under a full moon, the silence of the cool desert night is broken by the sounds of serenading insects looking for a mate. But not all of these insect songs are designed to find a partner. Some have a more sinister tone. A spotted predatory katydid. Also known as bush crickets, some katydids are happy munching on leaves, but not this one. It looks like an alien from a sci-fi movie. It's covered in sharp spines and armed with equally sharp jaws. And it has long antennae that can sense the slightest movement in the dark. every bit an alien predator. Its victims are cicadas. After dark, male cicadas call to females, who respond with a chirp, so the male can find its mate. Each species of cicada has its own song and answering call. The spotted predatory katydid has cracked the cicada code. It can mimic those enticing female chirps with a flick of its long wings and pulsating body. What's remarkable is that this complex deception seems to be hardwired into the katydid's DNA. Since it can mimic the songs of cicadas, it's never heard before. This one's detected a likely victim. It answers the male cicada's mating call. A siren song that male cicadas find irresistible. But in these forests, answering the call of love can prove to be a fatal attraction. 
drawn by instinct, the unwary victim walks towards mortal danger. And once it's close enough, the katydid uses its powerful back legs to pounce. Once ensnared, a killer bite is delivered to the throat. It's all over. An appetizing midnight snack. It's said that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. But sometimes, no matter how good the example set by parents, the kids are naturally prone to antisocial behaviour. The young antlion is a natural born killer. Among the monsters haunting the desert night, a juvenile delinquent terrorises the microcosmic underworld. The antlion. It is the nymph phase of the lacewing. The decidedly more elegant adult feeds on pollen, nectar and the odd aphid. But in its larval stage, the antlion is a menacing carnivore. This natural born killer is armed to the teeth, literally. Its mandibles resemble sickle blades and it's not afraid to use them. It preys on passers-by, building a trap, one of the most efficient traps in the animal kingdom. The antlion begins construction by crawling backwards, using its abdomen as a plough, shoveling up the sand, then throws each little pile clear of the scene. He keeps moving round and round to make the pit deeper about three inches across and two inches deep until the slope is as steep as it can be without collapsing. A death trap. A masterpiece of devious engineering. Hiding just under the surface, it lies in wait for innocent passers-by. Concealed beneath the sand, the lava can sense faint ground vibrations. The spider wanders close. But not close enough. A foraging ant. Moving closer. stumbles into the hole. The antlion launches. But this lucky ant finds its footing and escapes a gruesome death. The predator doesn't have to wait long. Another ant tumbles into the trap. And this one can't get out. The sandy wall is unstable by design. 
The larva now throws sand at the ant to knock it off balance and creates an avalanche that delivers its victim to its waiting jaws. The ant lion injects the ant with venom and enzymes before starting to suck the life out of the still struggling victim. It's as if the earth has opened up and swallowed the ant whole. The ant lion's trap provides a ready-made grave. The Australian desert is full of pitfalls. While some assaults come from below, it pays to keep a watchful eye on the sky. Because out here, death can also rain from above. The Wedgetail Eagle is an aerial assassin. Dry, desolate, hostile. Out here, resources are few and far between. Spanning thousands of square miles, the vast expanse of the Australian desert is a silent killer. But some species are well equipped to meet these extreme challenges. Australia's largest bird of prey. With a wingspan of nearly 10 feet, the wedge-tailed eagle. She's an apex predator, soaring high on the food chain. Thanks to her arsenal of deadly weapons. Her hooked beak is for tearing flesh, dead or alive. But it's her wickedly sharp switchblade-like talons that do the real damage. A fierce hunter and fiercely loyal to her family. Wedge-tailed eagles mate for life. Like Bonnie and Clyde on the wing, this pair works together to provide food for their chicks. Effortlessly soaring upon desert thermals, she scours the searing landscape for prey. Wedge-tailed eagles possess incredible eyesight. Each eye has a bony ring that can be squeezed to elongate the eyeball acting like a zoom lens, seeing prey up to two miles away. Even the largest of kangaroos need to be wary of an aerial assault. Movement amongst the boulders has caught her eye. Quick and nimble, rock wallabies are difficult moving targets. They navigate the rocky outcrops with all the agility of a mountain goat. The wallabies know they're being hunted and scramble. Their best chance of survival is to find cover. For those that don't, it's open season. Her lethal talons quickly dispatch the hapless prey, tearing flesh from bone. Her curved beak makes short work of the carcass. A kill of this size is enough to feed the entire family. The pair has two chicks, 
recently hatched and voraciously hungry. There's no rest for the adult eagles as the kids constantly demand their pound of flesh. Creatures of the plains beware. These winged assailants have an insatiable appetite. Australian deserts harbour some of the world's most notorious killers. But there's one that stands out from the crowd. A hitman with a terrifying reputation. Its feigned bite contains enough lethal toxins to commit mass murder. The inland Taipan. Australian deserts are home to a disproportionate number of venomous reptiles, armed with chemical weapons that kill with horrifying efficiency. But of all the world's venomous snakes, the inland taipan is the supreme master. One drop of its venom would kill one quarter of a million mice in a matter of seconds, or 100 men in under an hour. But in order to feed, this six foot long female must first locate a victim. Luckily, she's armed with more than venom. Tasting the air, her tongue picks up the slightest clue. Just a molecule of scent gives the prey away. There is a potential victim and it's close. This cold-blooded killer prefers warm-blooded prey. Native rodents spend the daylight hours in the cool of their underground burrow. But just like the caves of the desert, burrows are no safe haven. The Taipan's smooth, glossy scales allow for a silent approach. As she gets closer, her keen vision helps to pinpoint the source of the scent. If these agile rodents sense her presence, they will try to escape or lash out with sharp claws and teeth. A silent assassin. She uses the shadows to approach her chosen target, undetected. It's all over in the blink of an eye. Neurotoxins quickly paralyze the victim, while hemotoxins start to break down the rat from the inside. Chalking up yet another notch on her belt, this proficient killer won't need to eat again for several weeks. Which is good news for the other creatures of the desert. Forged by extremes, the predators of Australia's deserts are built tough. They cheat and steal, stalk and con, slash and maim. Deadly Australians that will do whatever it takes to survive in this arid wasteland. <laughs>